What's up y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So I debated with myself whether or not I was going to make this video because I can already see the comments that are going to be down below, but I decided, you know, it's my channel. I'm going to make this video and hopefully it'll help somebody out there. So if you're unaware right now, lumber prices are ridiculous and I have a laundry room barn door to make. Nothing crazy. It's going to be painted, sealed, all that kind of stuff. So me as a business owner, I need to remain profitable in what I'm doing while still putting out a quality product. So I'm going to build a barn door in a manner that you probably haven't seen before. And I'm going to be using this blonde sanded primed plywood and some one by sixes to make it happen. So I'm still going to make money off of this door. Not a lot though, um, but it is for a friend. So I'm not really too concerned about it, but I'm going to show you how, how you can make a quality barn door with some plywood and some pine from your big box store. So let's get into it. Okay, so I just wanna talk about why I'm using the materials that I'm using. Originally, I was gonna use all pine boards, right? But for the main body of the door, I would need seven boards to make the main body of the door. And I saved myself like 40 bucks by buying this sheet of plywood instead. So not only do I save money there, but with this plywood, I'm going to cut this to the exact dimension of the door because this door is a special request. It's got to be 33 and a half inches wide by 84 inches tall. So I'm going to cut this piece of plywood at that. And then I'm going to make this frame, which, you know, it's a typical like K design that you see on barn doors. And I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to put it on top and flush trim everything. And it's going to be perfect. So that's why I'm using these materials. So I had to put uh, this on hold because now it's pouring. This happens all the time and I don't have enough space in the shop to actually do this. So I had to move the plywood in. Just got, you know, just getting a little workout moving three quarter sheets. But hopefully this is just a uh, passing storm and we'll be back at it in a second. But my windows are down in my truck so I need to go put those up. So the rain is not as uh, strong right now. It's still steady but hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. So let me just talk about the concept of the operation because I can't cut or do anything right now, so I'm just gonna tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm gonna cut the sheet of plywood at the determined size for the door. It's a custom door, so it's gonna be 84 inches tall, 33 and a half. So I'm gonna cut the sheet at that size. Then using the pine boards, I'm gonna make the frame. It's a typical like K style barn door. I'm going to assemble all this. I'm going to domino the joints and all that good stuff. Then I'm going to glue, screw from the back this. That way I know there's going to be no separation on the edges. And then I'm going to take my flush bitch router and just go around. So this, like the outsides here, they'll just be a little bit that'll come off. will be perfectly flush with the 84 by 33 and a half inch piece. So that's the concept. I don't see why that wouldn't work well. Um, I built the barn door in our tiny house in the same manner except I didn't use plywood. I used all pine boards for the backer and by using the plywood on this project I saved myself like 40 bucks compared to using pine boards and not to mention the time of gluing all of those pine boards up together so that actually makes my cost go up because of time and labor. So. I'm hoping to remain profitable on this project. We'll see. It should take me two days. This is being painted. So if you're not having a painted door, this method probably wouldn't work very well because nobody wants to look at the plywood. But this is being painted solid white. So it should work out well. Hopefully this rain will stop in a couple minutes and uh, I can just start hacking away at this lumber and get this thing together.
it is extra humid out here now that the rain has uh, come and gone but I just got the frame portion of the door laid out so all I'm doing is in each board these are all one by sixes so they're actually five and a half inches wide I measured them to make sure they are five and a half inches so I'm just gonna put a biscuit I decided to use my biscuit joiner because I already had it set to three quarter inch material and I just want help with alignment I don't need any strength on this so alignment is all I need biscuits will get it done so I just measured up from the bottom two and three quarters marked two and three quarters the middle basically of each of the boards and I'm gonna have two on the bottom so it's a little thicker then there'll be one in the middle this is going to be 42 inches from the bottom which is the center here so from the center of this board is 42 inches from the bottom and then one up top here so I'm gonna go ahead and biscuit out all of these marks they're all penciled out ready to go so I'm gonna do that and then uh, get this thing glued up This portion of the door has been sitting in these clamps for about an hour now. Uh, this glue up top is tacked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of clamps. I'm going to take this off the workbench, put the piece of plywood on, put this back on top and just tack it with a few brad nails. That way I just make sure it's square. Then I'll flip it over and I'm gonna screw in from the back. Too easy.
I just went around and scribed an inch mark around the outer perimeter. And I'm just gonna be using these one inch Power Pro screws. They're multi-material, they're exterior rated. But what I'm gonna do is just drive, they're only an inch, right? And this top layer of plywood is three quarters. So I'm actually gonna drive them in through the wood just enough so that I can go back and throw a little filler on there and sand it to make it smooth. And then you won't even know that these are there. In all honesty, you'd probably be okay with the brad nails and the glue as long as you just clamped it down after or weighed it down so that that glue could really even out and get a nice bond there. But this is just going to be extra security and make sure everything is snug together and it's how I'm going to do it. So this pack of screws was like 10 bucks. I'm not going to use all of them. I'll use maybe 15. But yep. One inch screws. I did almost forget to put the angled pieces in, so let me show you how I do it. There's no math, it's just marking and it makes it way easier. So I just did this piece and it fits pretty money. So I lay out the rest of the board and I just put the edge in this corner and the other edge in that corner. Come down, make a little mark right there do the same on all corners there and there then I'm gonna flip this board over use a straight edge connect the dots and then take it back to the track saw put that track right on there and let it rip There we have it. So I'll do the same thing. I'll drop some brads in here and uh, I won't screw it. It'll just be glued and brad. Good to go.
All right, y'all, so I was able to get the door done. It rained for a couple of days, and then we had a couple of nice days, as you can tell with my sunburn here. But let me show you the door. It turned out really nice. I sprayed Chemaqua Plus by Sherwin-Williams on it. Three coats on the front, three coats on the back. Let me step back here so you can see it. There it is. Plywood on the back. Pine from the big box store on the front. The edges are good to go. And if you're really worried about the edges, you could always edge band the plywood prior to assembly, and you'd even get an even smoother finish if you were worried about it, but it's super smooth. This door is going in a laundry room, so nobody's gonna see the backside. And I know you're all wondering, but I'm getting 500 bucks for this door. It's for a friend. If it was not a friend, it would be more than that. And the $500 is just for the door. I'm not putting any hardware on it. I'm not doing any of that. He's doing all that himself. So uh, that's where we, we ended up with a number. I think that fit his budget. It's a custom door. It's definitely on the lower end for what you should pay for a custom door. But I was happy to make it and I was happy to film the process for you guys and share it. So um, typically I use like eight quarter stock. I'll plane it down a little bit and then I'll do shaker style. So I'll have half inch, usually MDF or plywood in the middle and it's actually floating. So it's not just sandwiched like this. Um, but again, those materials cost more. So it would need to be more. And right now, a lot of people don't have a thousand to two thousand dollars to spend for a custom door so um, if somebody has that budget by all means don't make it this way make it with shaker style because uh, in the long run that is the better way to make a door but this works for a laundry room can't go wrong nobody sees the backside so you don't need to worry about a design on the backside because it's just a washer and dryer and it's going to slide back and forth but if this was if this door, like I mentioned at the beginning, if it wasn't being painted, I wouldn't make it this way. And if it was going to be an entry into another room, you just might want to consider, do you care what the backside looks like? Because it's just plain. It's a plain white. This is all white, up and down. So it's a solid heavy door, it's good. It's uh, gonna work well for them and I'm happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope uh, it maybe gave you another idea of how to build a door if you're trying to be more budget friendly. Because I know a lot of people ask for doors, but they're expensive and they take time to make. So that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. My shop is a mess. You guys are keeping me busy. And uh, in just a few months, I'll be taking all this out of here and bringing it to the new house. So thank you guys for the support you're showing us on that process too, watching those videos, leaving the comments. We really appreciate it. So if you're not subscribed already to the channel, I don't know what you're doing yet at this point. So please go ahead and do that. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I typically respond to comments like once every couple of months. I just like do them all at once. I just like go down the list and do it. I don't do it every day or even weekly. So if it takes me a second to get back to you, I'm sorry. But that's it. I'm getting out of here. I just wrapped up a bunch of uh, patches and a couple of signs. So I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys for watching again. And I'll see you on the next video. See you.